back to the RPR Morning Show, reaching you live from Enoch State. I'm Natalie Uku. Good morning if you're just joining us now. And of course, I'm not here alone. Right next to me is my action Park team member who has long... Well, he tried to escape, but then I dragged him back. Do you know that is? Nambi Obaya. Nambi, good morning. Good morning, Natalie. I, There's I, no running away. The I, Morning Show will reach you wherever you go. This, this is a, it's an aberration. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not meant to be away this early. I was getting used to... You know, having very nice tea in the morning. I noticed. Up, sunrise through the window, having tea. You know, while you're doing this about review, I'm watching you and listening and saying, I agree or I don't agree. <laughs> it was fun being on the other side. Or rather, it is fun being on the other side because I don't want it to sound like maybe this is some sort of permanent arrangement where... I mean, you see, nobody said it, but you're already speaking it <laughs> into existence. I, I found out you were looking too refreshed the other day. You came in with sunglasses. So you're not happy I look... No, you're not happy I look how, refreshed. How can I be happy when my eyes are falling inside and your own eyes are coming out? I, I can't. Look on the bright Look on the bright side. At least. My happiness is key. I know you're happy. Okay, your you, happiness wait, is wait. key. So I'm a sacrifice. No, you're happy I to be actual part in the morning. Happiness. Bringing the people early morning vibes. You're like early morning television copy, you wake people up with positive vibes. And I was a beneficiary of that for a while. Or next, I keep saying was, I am a beneficiary <laughs> of that. Barring this, this one incident with me sitting here. I'm so used to being a viewer now. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm enjoying being a viewer. Watch me fall sick all through <laughs> this week. Well, on the show today, as you know, we have a lot coming your way. As Nnamdi said, your early morning action-packed cup of coffee. We'll begin with a review of newspaper headlines and following developments in the nation's polity. Further on the program, we're going to be connecting with our man on the street as he brings us reaction on the quality of the Enugu College Road and the general impact of the development on ease of doing business along the axis. On today's special edition, we'll be engaging concerned parties in the centenary city dispute as we attempt to unravel land-related issues that have been described as controversies, contentious disputes. The list goes on. We'll try to gather more facts as the show progresses. You need not go anywhere. Up next is the newspaper review and... This is a very special announcement. We all know Mr. Alex Obodu, and we know him from the one and only Eastern Eye, the, six, the show that seeks to preview, analyze, review, and in one word, X-ray. But today we introduce him as Afia TV's head of news and the current affairs. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, Natalie. Congratulations. Thank you. Good morning, Nandi. Good morning. I'm, I, I, you know, being that I've not received any drink, I can't claim mm. to be aware of that. Yeah, you know, don't want to drink. I'm, I'm, I'm from I'm from Ibuzo, and mm. even good morning is said with with a little libation. Yeah, even good morning. That's the title of a program here, so <laughs> it, it can good sink. Good morning with a little cola nut. No, we don't. Yeah, I mean, no, do alcohol. No, anything. You know, if I, if you if you if you wish me well without alcohol, your but but your where but, but where I come from, we do it with cola nut, not with alcohol. No, cola nut is for I mean for for gatherings. Cola nut is like. Is will I say is it's treated like okay, we're all here with peace. Mm. But that you wish somebody well, you want to greet somebody, good morning, but happy, uh, congrats on your child, congrats on your new house, uh, but, congrats on but I wish you well. Uh, alcohol drink. Uh, I I well where's where's the mm. drink? I, I don't know if I should believe that now. <laughs> that that's the drink. We're going to shut down a uh, brewery soon. Now we are speaking a language I understand clearly. Mr. Alex, I'm happy you're a solutions journalist. Yes. Nandi has come with many problems. He's talking about alcohol in the morning. He's talking about being off the AM show because he's relaxing, watching from home. Yes. He's talking about issues that are making the morning controversial and we've not even started How, how is the morning so, controversial? What is controversial about waking up? I would up like out? to throw this question to Mr. Alex. Could you please give us a solution to this challenge? Before we give any solutions, I, I have a simple before question. We, before we, before is Nigeria so problems? bad? That waking up in the morning and drinking tea is now considered controversial. How, how is that controversial? Well, I did. I said early morning tea, watching the AM show. Know you don't mean but I think it all depends. I, 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 don't I, 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 I think it all depends on the quality of tea you are taking. Oh no! So here's yeah, the thing. tea differs from from my degree to Mena to no, Enugu no, to I, to I, I'm, I'm, I'm very so. Well, not most people. People who know me well know that I'm a connoisseur of tea. I love tea. I have like different. Varieties of tea in the house, and then they're like it's tea. All right. Till I met Natalie. All right, Captain. So, coffee. So we All should right, call you tea bag. Andy. Coffee. So coffee. your second name should be tea bag. Captain and Natalie is coffee. So the, the the hostility towards tea comes from Camp Coffee. Mm. Is Mr. Nandi? 
Captain Namdi. Captain. Watching this, we know why. Mr. <laughs> Namdi, Captain. Captain Namdi. Don't worry, you understand later. Ah. Before we engage in more uh, contentions here on the show, we'll head straight to the Daily Independence. And the top story here reads, Naira gains 660 Naira on a $7 billion foreign exchange backlog clearance. BDC's return. PDP, not central, moves to replace Ayu. Damagom with substantive cheer insists on serving out its term in office. Another one here reads, Railway Corporation generated 1.07 billion from passengers in Q4 of 2023, credited to the NBS. That's rather interesting. Kogi Guba, confusion at tribunal as more SDP witnesses disown the positions. Moving on to Daily Times. How we're lobbying the federal government to secure release of Kanu, credited to Kalu, urges support for Tinubu, says he means well for Ndivo. Electricity consumers, electricity consumers increased to 12.12 million in Q4 of 2023, said by the NBS. Our anti-corruption fight will spare no one, said by the EFCC boss. Troops neutralized several terrorists in Northwest, intercept illicit drugs in Ogun, said by the army. Banks are in good stead to meet recapitalization target, said by ACAMB. Palliatives, not solution to current hardship, says Diri. Kogi Paul, confusion at tribunal sitting as witnesses disown the positions. I'm moving on straight to the punch, a cover story. Discos make one trillion naira amid grid crisis. Unmetered customers hit 5.8 million. Discos grew revenue by 30% in 2023, overbuilt customers despite grid collapses. Electricity tariff hike looms as federal government raises gas price. NERC vows more sanctions over estimated bills. Away from that, uh, police go after hoodlums for raiding night bus, robbing passengers. Presidential nod, Ondo APC governorship aspirants besiege Abuja for Tinubu's endorsement. Tinubu, African leaders, grace Senegal president swearing in today. I'm moving on straight to daily trust. Finally, for me, petrol subsidy removal. Ten months after, federal government yet to roll out electric vehicles. Energy crisis threatens project charging stations inadequate in states. Experts task governors on infrastructure. War on Gaza. anti netahayu protests rock Israel. Netherlands topped Nigeria's export destination in fourth quarter of 2023. 13 killed, two injured in Kogi, auto crash. Mega looters won't go scot-free, said by EFCC. Bandits abduct five-day-old baby mother in Kaduna. Eight arrested as Unimate lecturers stabbed to death in office. Mm. I will start this morning from the Vanguard at the major headline there. Banks need 4.7 trillion naira to scale CBN new capital hurdle, and it's followed by the rider no bank qualifies under new guidelines. ETI, Zen, Access, First Bank lead in eligible capital. Seven qualify by adding retained earnings. No need to panic. That's according to the ACAMB. VP Shetima, CBN Governor Cardoso, Eye of Teriba uh, to headline the 2024 Vanguard Economic Summit. Aburi rejected Peter Obi's advice for all inclusive convention. That's according to the Obidati spokesman. Energy crisis, more troubles for Jenkos as FG increases gas price by 11%. Okwama, how soldiers, villagers died. This is according to an eyewitness. Says Bayelsa militant leader, Amagbeng, not from Okwama. Notes leader from Okoloba, led the army to Okwama. Reveals the conspiracies, what transpired on the 14th of March. Allow Okwama to bury the dead, and this is from residents. London made in flight, how we fought restriction of air peace return flights to rejected parts of Muritala Mohammed International Airport. That's according to the CEO, Alan Uyema. 
withheld salaries will shut down varsities if, and of course this is from the non-teaching staff, ahead of the 2024 Olympics, Daniel Igali says only two Nigerians are capable of winning medals. Moving on to the nation and the key headline there, banks, experts, OKCBN's policy on recapitalization. Implementation will put financial institutions in position to stimulate real sector of the economy. Giregu Power plans capacity raise to 1,300 megawatts. Firm puts investment at $550 million. Don't threaten Fubara with impeachment, PDP wants lawmakers. Aida Tiwa disowns 273 aides appointed by commissioner. And on to the Nigerian Tribune, teacher shortage in primary schools hits 194,876. That's according to UBEC. Some schools in rural areas have two or three teachers. NUT expresses worry. How Abure ignored Obi's advice on, Lego, on Labour Party crisis. That's on Minu Satanko. 13 killed, two injured in auto crash in Kogi. Six feared killed in Anambra cultist clashes. Revenue accrued to Federation accounts exceeds 2 trillion naira mark. That's according to a report. OAUGF uncovers 13.955 trillion naira rising negative bank balance of 28 MDAs. Reps Committee on Public Accounts ready to invite Accountant General. And finally, from the Daily Sun, Ondo. APC splits over choice of candidates, wranglings in party ahead of primaries. Domestic carriers, manufacturers groan as scarcity persists. Kaduna debt, NEF, can others fume, tell Governor Sani to go after ex-Governor El Rufai, other culprits. Uni Ilori expels 19 students over theft and exam malpractices. Rivers political crisis, PDP, rises against defecting lawmakers, insists members who joined APC no longer assemblymen. All right, Namdi, how about you? Tell us which one you'd like us to react first. It, it, it would shock you. I want to come from a place you wouldn't even expect. And it's something that was hidden somewhere. But before I go to that, um, there's a lot of uh, talk about the return flights of airpiece to London. And um, you, I don't know if you followed the trend yesterday with people posting screenshots yeah. of prices going down by more than 50%. Prices that were $1,500 now going for $450, $500. So what we don't know is, was it always possible to fly at that price? Have they been telling us a lot of hogwash mm. about the cost of jet A1 fuel, the um, the volatility of the dollar in Nigeria. I mean, we had even Ayata peg the dollar at yeah. one hundred and seventy one dollars, sure. then peg it at a thousand dollars. So, and then of course, Ni Nigeria is not helping any matters, and we are owing, I think, about fifty two percent mm. of the debt to airlines of the top five nations, which owe over seventy percent. That's right. <laughs> it, you, know, you know, I watched Alan Anyoma's interview mm. following that maiden flight to London Gatwick Airport. And he revealed a lot of things. And I can tell that he held back from saying a lot of the things that could embarrass the country. You know, there were institutions within the country that didn't want airpiece to fly to London. Oh. So it wasn't a UK problem. It was a national problem. Some people in NCAA did not want airpiece to fly to London. And now he's telling you that if a Nigerian carrier flies into London, Mm. that the exploitation of our people will, will be reduced yes, because yeah. they were charging them upwards of uh, a, a thousand five hundred uh, he said 15 million he said 15, 15 million, million for flights. for return flight to london now that immediately they announced their prices which is around five million at the time they announced it they started bringing down their prices to around 10 million mm. so the moment epis entered the space they started forcing down their prices. That tells you the importance of competition. You know yeah. how these things operate. Yeah, competition I, forces down price. Apart from competition, I mean, and this is my issue with Nigeria. I, I always knock Festus Kayamo. He's not somebody who has enjoyed a lot of goodwill from me. In, I'm not even going to deny that. Uh, but as, as Minister of Aviation, we have to give credit where credit is due. 
um, first of all, Nigeria, we, we, if, you, if, if you know aviation law or aviation relationships, if you have bilateral and multilateral agreements with different countries, yeah. with the amount of flights flying into Nigeria, Nigeria should have so many flights flying out. In the opposite what, direction. What, what has stopped our aviation industry from taking advantage yes. of these routes? Because you go to the international airport, yes. not a, with, with, without airpiece, not a single, single domestic carrier, carrier yes. flying it, out of the country. It goes back to what Alan Onyoma said. I, they had to pass through lots of checks, audits, mm. before they were even qualified to fly into London. Mm. And he, he got to a point where they suggested to him to go into an agreement with a European carrier or, or UK carrier to get into a wet lease agreement, mm. which they can cancel at any time. So he said they, they had to take their time to go through those tests to enable them to stand any shocks that will come from the market. Because you know, the moment you start flying into the UK, their laws will start applying onto you. Yeah. So he made sure that he got certified with everything they needed out there. But even, even at that, they still have those, those shenanigans around having to fly from Africa. It's, it's a thing. Because the moment you are flying in, you are, you're coming to take a piece of the pie from them. Yeah. They understand how the market buses work. Yeah. Because what it means, naturally, is that most Nigerians will prefer to fly the with Nigerian a Nigerian car. carrier. Because yeah. one is cheaper, one is more convenient. You don't get the condescending attitude on the plane. You, on the plane which Nigerians experience when they fly international airlines. <laughs> Before we leave this topic, it's so funny how um, Alan Yema is basically jumping through rings of fire uh, to get approval. And for anyone, I mean, if, if we're being honest here, you take an international flight out of Nigeria, it seems as if they save their worst planes for the Nigerian leg. Because, I mean, you get to any hub uh, of any of these carriers, be it Amsterdam, uh, Dubai, anywhere, and your plane for the second leg of the journey is so mm. is far superior mm -hmm. to what flew you out of Nigeria. And coming back to Nigeria, it's the same story. When you get to these hubs, and from there the return leg to Moitala Mohammed, you immediately drop into an inferior aircraft. <laughs> I, I, I don't know whether to say it's an inferior aircraft because see, for the aircraft to actually qualify to fly into I mean, there's just a minimum standard. Yeah, yeah. It, but, the, because, the barest minimum. Because even at that for before, Nigeria. before an aircraft will qualify to fly out of a particular airspace, mm. it will need to meet stringent uh, uh, yeah. maintenance measures. What I think is that it, it, the way we relate, by, by we I mean the likes of NCAA, the, the likes fan. of Air, Air FAN, the way they relate with the corresponding counterparts outside of the country will determine how those people treat uh, airlines. Mm. But also, let us also face, uh, say this, not all the domestic airlines actually qualify to fly international. Everyone is making noise. But Alan Oyama made a point in that interview. He says that the reason why some Nigerian carriers failed on the international route before now was because they didn't have the patience to go through all the hog of all the tests and audits they were supposed to do. When you just get that first certification, you want to fly to London, and then you get there and your tire is shaking at, at Gatwick or Heathrow. They say, oh, these guys can't do this. And because the moment they sense any problem, they send you a packet. Oh. Tells you he, he enrolled the services of the Israeli maintenance company. They charge so high, but you have to stick with them. Because people you work with can also be a certification for you. Yeah, yes, So I, I think it, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things. If you have an industry that can potentially be groundbreaking for you, what you need to do is to encourage the carriers. Yeah, but then you should be asking yourself, why are they not encouraging the local airlines to go international? Oh. And the, another question will be, are the local airlines actually ready? to go international. Oh. All right, uh, still speaking about transportation, um, let's take this one from Daily Independence. Railway Corporation generated 1.07 billion Naira from pass passengers in Q4 of 2023, and this was said by the National Bureau of Statistics. What do you think that the country in general is losing from ignoring the Eastern Rail? Yeah, the Eastern Corridor, just imagine what would have happened, how much they would have made by uh, fourth quarter of 2023, if the Eastern Corridor is vibrant and running. Imagine taking a train from Port Harcourt all the way from Enugu 
to Kaduna. You know, what it helps you to do. Imagine if you have a rail line from Enugu to Lagos. Do you know how many people that will take that train? If you have a train coming from Lagos to the east, do you know how many containers it will carry? I, I, was, going to, I was going to ask that because, I mean, for, for rail transport, mm -hmm. the money is cargo. Yes. And if there's any corridor yes. that provides commercial activity. Yeah, you know, th there was something posted on, on social media by Joe Ibokwe. He posted one of Nigeria's cargo trains carrying, I think it was 52 containers. And someone immediately said under the comment, those were 52 trucks off our roads. Oh. You know what that means? Yes. Just imagine that if, uh, let's just hypothetically that 500,000 containers came into the country. And out of that 500,000, 400,000 of those containers will be moved around by rail. You won't have all this because you, you, you've, you've heard stories of containers being carried by trucks, falling and killing people. Yes. It's because they're not meant to be moved by road. They're not meant to be moved by road. It's by rail. Yeah, it's meant to be last, road is meant to be last mile. Yeah, I mean, if, if the there's, there's a to the problem, it's market. just a, a, a short, a short movement. Yeah. I, I'm just hearing this for the first time because we've grown so used to seeing trucks, you know, okay. carrying containers. But no, they are not supposed it's, because it's the, the, the truth of the be. matter, imagine trying to, a container is falling and they want to hold it. Is it possible? Just imagine that for a minute. It's impossible to squash. Even the kite will fall on, can't, can't withstand it. It's like a kekena pep colliding cars. with, with, I, I with mean, the if bus. You, if you're familiar with Lagos, the Osho, the expressway from Apapa Port, uh, down past Ilasa, down to um, the airport exit, down, it's a, it's, a, it's a beehive of container accidents. The amount yeah. of cars, the Ijesha Sele corridor, the amount of cars that have it's an aberration. It shouldn't lives be lost because of be containers. So what they are missing by leaving out the Eastern Corridor is that if it's one billion, you, you could be looking at three billion. Three? Or, or even I mean, far more than that. Because the, 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 the bulk of people that move around come from this axis. It, this, it, is not, this is not King Kong and beating our chest about... But, but look uh, at the Western Corridor. The bulk, you, the, you, the bulk do, of do you know how many people that have left for Lagos from the East? But, but the bulk of movement in the southwest is people. It's not even cargo. It's people. We're not yet maximizing cargo, which is where I think we might be selling ourselves short. Now, what this thing, you know, and this is my worry with Nigerian numbers, how much was spent to earn this 1.07 billion? But, well, you see, I, I think that how the, profitable is our the, system? the NBS are just merely giving out the numbers. Mm. Uh, it's the Nigeria Railway Corporation will tell you how much they spent yeah. on diesel, how much they spent on Security, producing the tickets, and uh, you know, trying to uh, protect the rail lines and all that. Mm. But thinking beyond all that, just imagine for a moment that you have the southeast properly connected by rail, moving, moving up north and moving to the west, and vice versa. Yeah, I'm moving to the south. south. Moving to, to the, no, naturally, when you have rail lines running, it goes the, all the way down. Because the rail line from Port Harcourt comes all the way from anyone up. So because initially when the rail lines were built, it ran from, from Kaduna down to Enugu to Port Harcourt. Yeah, yeah. So that anything you are moving, you are, the moment you get to Enugu, whatever will come on, will come on as they are, they are heading down to the Atlantic Ocean. Because oh. the, the thought at that time was the exploitative movement of goods and services. But now we are supposed to reverse it. Reverse it yeah. We'll reverse it by making it more productive, movement of people and goods in order for us to enhance the economy. But are we actually using our railway system to enhance our economy? Because if you look at it, it looks like there are parts of Nigeria that in their heads, they deserve the railway yeah. system. In it, fact, no there, are, there are plans to build railway, railway for other countries. Other than, and you are leaving uh, out a particular corridor. It was started. They, they are building railway for Maradi, but <laughs> the Eastern Corridor is totally well, left out. Since we're talking about money, let's come to this topic. I know you uh, I think you talked about it on the Eastern Eye yesterday. Banks need 4.7 trillion naira to scale CBN's new capital hurdle. And this is the part that really intrigues me. No bank qualifies under new guidelines. ATI, Zenit, Access, First Bank, lead eligible capital. And seven of banks will qualify by adding retained earnings. This is from the Vanguard, of course. But they're telling us that there is no need to panic. You are 
typically when you look at how the banks operate, you, you would know that they will meet up mm. because they have some time. They have about 20, 24 months. They're about to get it done. So the banks have a lot of <laughs> something just something funny just came to my mind. The banks have a lot of powers. Mm. You know, I don't want to get into the powers they have. Mm. <laughs> they, they know what their powers are. But then they have the, the powers to juggle the resources available to them. And they know how to convert it to whatever they want. But it's something good for them. Imagine that you have doubled your value. Because that's basically what the central bank is asking them to do. Double your strength, double your powers, so that when the lightning strikes, you are properly earthed. Mm. You are grounded for all the shocks that will come from uh, whatever that is happening in the world. Even though there are international banks that went down. Recall there were a few banks, one in Switzerland and one in the U.S. Yes, US. Credit Suisse in yes. Switzerland. So, and all the questions were asked. The regulatory bodies, they didn't see this. They didn't see any sign that these banks will go down. So the central bank, I, I think they've looked at it because from the last time we did a, a reconsolidation, uh, they've seen that the value of the Naira from that time till now will have been eroded. So the oh. best thing to do is to pad, increase the thickness of your, of your if you are building road, if you are in road construction, they say the thickness of the, the tar. So you know, yes, yes, have to yes. be thick. So, so you, need to, you need to increase the thickness. So here's my, here's my worry. Um, how the banks are going to go about this revenue drive to bolster their capital base, you know, um, dropping of bad loans, selling off what can be sold, auctioning what can be auctioned, uh, basically lightening the liability column and trying to, there will also be, I mean, I don't want to say fraudulent, but questionable practices of overinflation of asset value mm -hmm. and all sorts of things. But the truth is that this cash must be with the NDIC. It must be with the Nigerian deposit mm. insurance, but it must be with them. So it's more, they need money. Will people be laid off? Will there be unsavory practices? Are we going to start seeing card maintenance every 48 hours, getting, well, a, getting a debit yeah. or card maintenance charge you know, it was every 48 hours? Was a, you know, the, that's, that's the worry Nigerians are having now. That's a particular company to raise money. That's a there's particular problem, couple of weeks that I was getting debits on my account, like no man's business. So I walked into the bank and I. I wanted to know why. Why do you charge this thing so frequently? And they tried to explain. And I said, no, it couldn't have been that frequent. Because if you looked at, if, if what you're explaining is what happened, then there's no explanation for this. But after I, I went to the bank, I, I stopped seeing those debits. The point I'm making is the banks know what to do, and they know the right thing to do. And I think that some of them will still go, they'll share, they'll, sell their shares or go public, as it were. Uh, it is also suspected that some banks may not survive it. Mm. They might be acquired, or are, some banks will acquire other banks, or some banks will be acquired. So it depends whether you're Jonah or you are the fish. Mm. Somebody will be swallowed. Or will we see some measures that maybe have start having some super banks? Yeah, there will be some super banks, idea. but uh, I don't know, just two names of banks came to my mind. But, but what, what of stepping down of operations? Banks. There are a lot of Nigerian banks having international um, continental, regional operations. How about some of them just step down these operations and save earnings? You may be, if you look at it, mm. if you step down international operations, it's going to weaken your access to Forex. Mm. Because I'm not even a financial expert, but I know that's what's going to happen. Mm. Imagine that you have an office in London and New York, and suddenly you pull away from that. And there are Nigerians who use your services in those places, and they use your services in, 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 in foreign currency. So once you lose that leverage, you cannot trade high on the, on the forex side. Mm. So I don't, and anybody with international connection will, will also look at an international uh, intervention mm. to get themselves do out you, of this. Do you, do you think any foreign financial firms might look at this as their opportunity to come in? Yeah. You know, bring in some, I mean, if I'm a bank in Europe now, I know the value of Naira to the euro. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are, how many billions are they asking Just for? come and use the, the money you know, to sweep it. You bring in, you, if, you, if, you, if you bring in 1 million euros, you are bringing in a billion Naira. So yeah, that's by the time, by, by time you bring in a 100 million euros, you brought in a 100, almost, what am I saying? Almost 200 billion Naira. That's it. But, but, but you know, that's not how those banks will think. Because they will also look at what will come from it. You, mm. you, are, you are putting in that money for what purpose, really? 
Are, yeah. are you putting it to operate in the Nigeria space, or are you putting it to maintain your strength at the international level? Let me put it this way. If you're a prospector, you're a bank in Europe, people do business every day with Nigeria and everything, 200 million strong. You're the one European bank that is sitting in the middle of the Nigerian banking sector. You are, you are, what you mentioned about Nigerian banks having foreign operations, this is now like a European sitting yeah. and making themselves a gateway. Yeah, but, but because that, I mean, businesses that's in like Europe will say, Why would, this is best practice, we're going to use you. If, they, if, if, they are, if they are going to do that, it, it will mean that they are supposed to have seen this before now. Mm. And ask yourself, why is it that we don't have most of those international would banking like organizations? An answer? Huh? Would you like an honest answer? Yeah. Very simple. And this was told to me by an older person. One of the issues Nigeria has in attracting foreign investors is if something goes wrong, they don't trust the judiciary. Yeah, well, you see, well, that's, that's on the, you see, that, so, that, is, that is outside of the The, the Nigerian system. economy is very attractive. The problem is if something goes wrong, yeah. is there justice for you? Yeah. Can you sue and get your money? That's the problem. That's the problem. All right, now let's look at something else that is wrong with Nigeria, and that is the state of security. Now, we're still looking at the Okwama killings and the death of 17 soldiers, and it seems as if we missed out the angle of the fact that some of the residents were also killed. Now, fresh conspiracies have come up as an eyewitness has said that the soldiers came there on a personal agenda that they were sent by a militant leader in Bayelsa that doesn't reside in Okwama. These are allegations because we even saw a video that trended sometime last week of a, one of the youth leaders making a lot of allegations and all of that. What is your assessment of these controversies in Okwama, especially as we only found out about this trip of the military to the community when the soldiers died. We never got any communication about any disputes between two communities. Why is all this unraveling now? And do you think that this could be a conspiracy that the world has never seen before? <laughs> you know, sometimes there will be more than two sides to a story. And you ask yourself, why is it that the only part of the story we are seeing is that 17 soldiers died? And every other part of the story seemed to be in low tunes. That stretch of Delta is, is a very sensitive and volatile stretch. The Escavos River, the River Rhines, that's, that's a hotbed for militants, oil bunkers, unquote, oil thieves. So you would know that a lot of money will also move, illegally speaking, in that route. So, if you look at that, it will attract interest from high and mighty places. You know, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about the mission of the military in Okwama. And uh, if, if you look at it, they are the Nigerian military. They issued a statement that those guys went for a peacekeeping mission. mission. And yesterday I saw one of the leaders of Afanurobo community saying, that anyone who wants to find out what has happened should dig deep. Dig deep and find out what happened. Whoa. Because if two brothers are fighting and you come and kill one of the brothers without actually finding out what the problem is. So now, now that we are in Nigeria, what's the problem between the two communities? Well, the Okoma and the, the uh, 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 Bumadi at the surface level, we hear land dispute. At the so, extended level, we hear oil-related issues. So that's it. So why is it that there's no detail about the problem? It's because that's something they don't want us to know. So since they want to keep it like that, let it be like that then. But unfortunately, people's lives have been lost. But, yeah, I'll, but, I'll, but, but lives were lost on two on the two sides. I was going to say that uh, there were reports that lost preceding the, the death of the soldiers. There were reports that more than double that amount of civilians we already killed. had been killed by the military. Unsubstantiated, but claimed by the people. And that this attack on the soldiers was some sort of reprisal. So, I mean, to watch this about conspiracy, and what you say about, I mean, which we all know in Nigeria, about the bunkering corridor, and this, of course, being a very, by, a very lucrative and vital part of it. Are we looking at a genuine peacekeeping mission, not to tarnish the image of the military, or are we looking at high-handedness using access and proximity to power to, you know, wield some heavy-handed solutions I, to quelling I think business it's a opposition? I think it's a, a mix of all. 
Mm. You know, because when you, you when you look at how things are unraveling politically in Nigeria, you, you, you expect anything. You expect anything, even how political parties relate. You have intra-political problems. You have, uh, even within a government, a governor and his deputy will be quarreling. <laughs> so if that is possible, then there can be disagreements over who will have access to the lion's share of, unquote, the free oil, if you know what I mean by that. So <laughs> at, at the end of the day, everybody is running away from saying that this is actually what the problem is mm. because of the consequences that might come out of it. Yes. There's a lot of, there's, there's a blind side to the, to the story that no one wants to come out with his full chest or have full chest to say. I think so, you, you because the, 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 the military keeps saying that their soldiers were killed, yes. that they came for peacekeeping, and they haven't given any of any further detail of exactly what was wrong. Is are they, which, which how many hectares of land were in dispute? Nobody you, has told us. You know that, and and like I said, that's even scratching the surface. But if you dig deeper, you now find the oil-related angles of it. Now, according to the eyewitness, the soldiers had come and they said they wanted to search the community. And they were allowed to search the community because they didn't have anything to hide, according to him. Eventually, they finished searching and said they wanted to go away with about three or two or three community members. And the villagers refused. And then they started to argue over it. And then the military started to open fire. Now, those are allegations we can't confirm, very unverifiable claims. But what you said earlier about hearing about only one side, 17 soldiers were killed. But you now hear the community members saying, Allow us bury our dead. I am just wondering why exactly is no one emphasizing the fact that some civilians lost their lives? I was totally scandalized when I saw the video last weekend of bodies lying around the community, blood, you know, it was a total bloodbath. But nobody brought up that angle. We understand that when soldiers are killed, any security operative, I mean, we're all humans, but when security operatives are killed, I think it's something that is considered unforgivable because you killed someone that was supposed to protect you. But every life matters. So hearing about only soldiers being killed and nothing about the residents, I think it's something that we should start to interrogate. Because if all these conspiracies are coming out now, I believe there's no smoke without fire. I mean, but to end this, the presidency has taken a position. They have taken a position with the military, quite naturally. You, you don't expect the commander-in-chief to, you know, leave his military, high and dry. He will, he, they've taken their position, and then whatever it's position more important than the rights to life of what, the people. Whatever position you want, protecting. whatever position you want to take, will be seen as dissent. Oh. I can't leave without asking you about this one because this one bothers me greatly, and it's from uh, Daniel Igali. It uh, and he says that only, only yes. two Nigerians wrestlers, right? have possibility of winning medals. I think there are two females, actually, possibly. Do you, this if is from the vanguard. Down, if you read down, maybe it might be just two females. Do you agree with him? Yeah, I mean, he knows why he's saying it. And it, I think that I'm, I'm forgetting the names of those two ladies that mm -hmm. always win medals. Uh, I think Blessing Oborodudu and uh, one other lady. But, okay. but, but I mean, when looking at our performance that we recently concluded, uh, Africa Gate. No, right? no, no. You don't use the the the, the level. <laughs> the the, the mean, level. From, from the, that, from the level amount, of the Africa Gate. From those amount of medals. Mm, are you yeah. saying? I mean, if is that we won ten medals, it's not. I won't be no, saying. No, but, but when Nigeria hosted in two thousand and three, mm. we topped the table. Mm. Have you forgotten? It's called hosting to win. We topped the table. And, and next Olympics. No, no. I'm I'm just saying that. No, if, but I, mean, I think it's unfair you, to say two medals. No, he knows what he's saying. He's being realistic. Mm. He know, because f for you to get to the level you qualify for a podium finish, mm. you will have posted performances that will take you there. No, not even in track and field, long jump. No, no, no. I, okay, he said the whole... Yeah. Well, you he know, said let, only see. two Nigerians capable of winning medals. Okay, 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 fine. But because I... Because the moment you mentioned Daniel Legali, my mind went to wrestling. wrestling. Immediately, yeah. So I'm sure that in saying that, he already has T Toby Amosua in mind. Because <laughs> uh -huh. Toby Amosua is... that's Nigeria's number yes, one medal. That's, that's one person that's been consistent with the times she's posting mm. in the last six months. Mm. She's won most of our races in the last six months. And maybe one or two other persons, maybe Ese Brume, 
That's a good might, day, yeah. might have a podium finish, maybe a, 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 a bronze medal finish or so, because she's a, a long jumper. Yeah, the uh, American long jumper at track. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I mean, so, if, if you look at it, he's correct. Those, are, those two uh, seem to be our elite athletes for now. We no longer have uh, the other lady that's been banned. Uh, bless no cabaret. Bless no cabaret. All right, yeah. uh, Mr. Alex, thank you for being here today. We have to. You know, sports is a natural hazard. I know. So, look at the way it did move. I know the it conversation. So fast. I turned to a bureau. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I turned to a bureau. You know, it's just a screener set, just coming yeah. up and, and going. Thank you for being here, Mr. Alex. We're thank you excited so much. and we welcome you thank formally. You. To the Afia TV family, and we Thank know you. you've been here. It's not like you're just joining, but mm. on a more permanent basis, it's truly a delight, and we're expecting a total overhaul, mm. a rapid mm. transformation. Mm. Preview and uh, to preview, mm -hmm. analyze, and analyze. X-ray Afia <laughs> TV news. Thank you well for done. being here. Thank you. Thank good you. Morning. Good morning. And that was Mr. Alex Obodo, our very new, very latest head of news and current affairs here at Afia TV. Join us to welcome him on social media. You can follow him at. Alex Obodo, am I correct? Alex Obodo One. Alex Obodo One. Instagram. Only, only and, one. and Twitter. Just one. one of and, 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 Alex and, Obodo and, One of Afia. And, and, <laughs> and on Facebook is Alex Obodo. Yes. So Facebook at Alex Obodo and on Instagram at Alex Obodo One and Twitter and X as well. I go to add of Afia. Alex Obodo One of Afia. Not One of One. <laughs> one of Afia. Alex Obodo One. And it has to be a finger doing this. Yes. Yeah, so please change your DP. <laughs> That's all right.